year, the men of the NHRA Pro Stock ranks have competed against each other for the right to race for a prize second only to winning the Winston Championship. Over the course of 17 events, points have been awarded based on qualifying positions at national events. Today, however, the point counting is over. The time is now. And English Town is the designated place to decide matters in the only way acceptable to drag racers on the track. Those fortunate enough to be among today's elite field have a chance to accomplish something about which most people can only dream. They will spend an afternoon doing what each of them loves best with the knowledge that by nightfall, a $50,000 payday could be theirs. From Old Bridge Township Raceway Park in Englishtown, New Jersey, welcome to the 8th Annual Running of the Budweiser Pro Stock Challenge. The National Hot Rod Association presents Championship Drag Racing on ESPN Speed World. The NHRA, the world's largest motorsport sanctioning body, today showcases pro stock action where driving skill is paramount. And the difference between winning and losing can be measured in thousands of a second. Championship drag racing from the NHRA. These are the eight best pro stock drivers and race cars in the world. The right to race in today's Budweiser Challenge came the hard way to these men. They earned it by their consistently high qualifying position at the last 17 NHRA events. Participation in the Budweiser Challenge can be very lucrative. $50,000 goes to the winner. Hello, everybody. I'm Dave McClelland, and I'm with the best pro stock driver in the world today, Warren Johnson. WJ qualified number one. He has been runner-up twice in this event. What will it take to win today? We're just going to have to read the track conditions correctly. Uh, in fact, everybody out here is going to be racing under just a little bit tricky track here. We're looking at a little overcast now, but that could change in a second. For a look at the very exotic race cars that make up this Budweiser Challenge, here's my good friend Steve Evans. David, today's Pro Stock Automobile is the ultimate evolution of the Detroit-built high-performance car. And thanks to NHRA's very stringent body designs, they still look like their production counterpart. A Dodge Daytona looks like a Dodge Daytona, with the exception of the big hood scoop, of course. A Chevy Lumina looks like a Chevy Lumina. In fact, they must use the stock steel roof and quarter panels, but that's where the similarities end. All the rest of the body panels are very lightweight carbon fiber, also very expensive. They roll on custom-built tube chassis, four-wheel disc brakes. They use four- and five-speed clutchless transmissions. But the big noise is under the hood. 500 cubic inches, huge four-barrel carburetors on racing gasoline, over 1,200 horsepower. Now, a good car costs maybe $85,000 to build, but today, one of these drivers gets a $50,000 return on that investment. Steve, during the past 17 NHRA national events, these eight drivers have been locked in a qualifying battle. They earned points based on their position. Number one got 175 points. That worked its way down to the number 16 qualifier, who received 85 points. Number four qualifier Bruce Allen had one number one spot, while number five Bob Glidden had two top spots. The number three qualifier, Larry Morgan, qualified first once, while his competition, Jerry Ekman, number six, also had one top spot. Scott Jeffrey on qualified first three times, while Mark Powick only had a single number one spot. And the top qualifier for today's event, Warren Johnson, qualified number one seven times. Jim Yates' top finish was a number four spot. As the crews push the cars back from the pre-race ceremonies, getting ready for round number one, the drivers beginning to concentrate on the task at hand. The 1992 NHRA Budweiser Challenge is being brought to you by Goodyear, number one in tires. And by Quaker State, the big Q is one top motor oil. The first pair of cars coming towards the starting area it will be the classic battle between Ford and Chevrolet, Bob Glidden against Bruce Allen. At the Budweiser Challenge for Pro Stock Race Cars, the crowd enthused over what they're about to see as the Ford versus Chevy battle kicks off the eight-car show. In the lane nearest the camera, it is the Super Shop Chevy Lumina driven by Bruce Allen. His competition, the Motorcraft Ford Probe, Bob Glidden at the wheel. 
This is a battle of a pair of two-time winners of this special event. Back in 1985 and 1986, Bruce Allen won the first two. Then Bob Glidden took over the winning chores in 1987 and 1988. He picked up the Pro Stock Challenge title. The pairings here in round number one are based on qualifying position on points earned. Bob Glidden had a total of 2290. Bruce Allen's got Lane Joyce with 2310. Based on the numbers of points earned, this could be the closest race of round number one, and certainly it is a crowd favorite. That Ford versus Chevy battle is one that has been waged since the two companies started making cars. Both drivers into the staging procedures, the start all important in this extremely close competition. Allen is ready, Glidden is set, a great start. Bruce Allen wins it, overcoming a slight advantage gained by Bob Glidden at the start. Bruce Allen runs a 7.29 to a losing 7.33 for Glidden and the Ford. This was a close race because Bob Glidden had a 21 thousandths of a second advantage off the starting line. That means that Bruce Allen and his Chevrolet had to overcome that advantage gained by Glidden, and he did it in fine style. When you compute the times, counting the reaction time advantage gained by Glidden, Bruce Allen took a 21 thousandth of a second victory. Let's go to the far end of the racetrack. Steve Evans is with the winner. You did okay. Bob Glidden had you by two hundredths off the line. You can't let that happen the rest of the day. That's a fact. Um, my driving could stand some improvement, and uh, hopefully it will. And 729. It's a pretty good run for that session, I think. Uh, shook a little bit in the gears, and... We just got to stay on top of the car set up and get our Super Shops car down through here. Good luck. Thank you. Back at the starting line, our next pair of pro stocks into the burnout procedure. It is Larry Morgan in the near lane and Jerry Ekman in the far lane. His Pennzoil Pontiac did not run well the last half of last year. But this season, he has certainly picked up the pace and as a result, qualified for this very elite field. For Larry Morgan, he has been running quite well with the Castro Oldsmobile. He's got one number one spot, two number twos. That earned him 2,420 points. And Lane Joyce over Jerry Ekman with 2,185 points in the qualifying season. Both drivers based out of the Newark, Ohio area. 500 cubic inch engines under the hood, racing gasoline through those giant four barrel carburetors. Close race that Morgan pulls out at the finish line. Larry Morgan advances into the semifinals with a 7.31 second victory at 189 miles an hour. The losing time, a 7.33. The advantage off the starting line went to Ekman. But it was very small, only seven thousandths of a second. As we watch again in replay, he tried to use that to hold off the charge of the Osmobile, but was unable to do so. As Larry Morgan ran a time that was 20 thousandths quicker than Ekman and at the finish line the margin of victory was 13 thousandths of a second close racing at its best how much distance was there about a fender link for Larry Morgan exiting his Oldsmobile is Larry who won that race Morgan you won that race thank God it I, the motor started fluttering in high gear and bat and slowed down I don't know what happened 731 to 733. Pretty good race. Yeah. Well, I knew it would be. I knew that he was he had been playing around with some stuff, so I you know, I didn't know what would happen. Can you win this thing? I think I can win it. <laughs> Steve, he has before two-time winner of the Budweiser Challenge, Larry Morgan. In its first test in competition, here's the brand new Dodge Daytona of Scott Jeffrey on. He'll be racing Mark Powick when we come back. Pro Stock Challenge at Old Ridge Township Raceway Park. This is the Oldsmobile of the Cowboy, Mark Powick. Alongside is Scott Jeffrey on in the Dodge Daytona, and you're on board looking out the front window at co-crew chief Mike Sullivan, who is not too pleased thus far with the performance of this brand new car. They debuted the Daytona at this event, and in the time trial action leading up to today's eliminations, the performance has not come close to what they experienced with the car that won this race a year ago. For Mark Powick, he used his single number one qualifying spot to help push him over the total needed.
to get into this eight car field. He ended up number seven. That means Scott Jeffrey on will get the lane choice. He had three number one spots, but bear in mind, those were all recorded with the old car. Nod of the head by Sullivan. Something's okay, at least at this moment, as Jeffrey on and Powick come to the starting line to stage here in the Budweiser Challenge. Again, the concentration needed at the start is critical. You see, as we're sitting on board with Scott Jeffrey on his hand, resting on the shifter of the four-speed transmission, most of his competitors have gone to a five-speed. Jeffrey on still using the four-speed clutchless type transmission. Both drivers taking their time. The final few inches, he's set. Heading down track, you can see the red light coming on, indicating the shift points for Scott Jeffrey on, who wins the race. 7.33 at 189 miles an hour, keeping pace with the other competitors. A losing time for Powick, who had problems, a 7.47. So Scott Jeffrey on advances into the final four, and that leaves us with the final race of round number one. It is the number eight qualifier, Jim Yates in the Dynamax Pontiac against the number one car, the AC Delco Osmobile of Warren Johnson. Meanwhile, let's go down to the far end of the racetrack with Steve Evans and find out what Scott Jeffrey on thought about that run. Scott, the first 100 feet with the Mopar car due to its short wheelbase has always been critical. Is the new car a little more forgiving? Yeah, it's a little more stable. You know, they got a lot of chassis design changes in it, and more than anything, I'm comfortable and can see the racetrack better. And I just like to say thank you to Budweiser for putting this thing on for us every year. I mean, it's really a neat deal, and uh, we really look forward to this first time. You've stayed with the four speed. Why? Well, for our particular power curve, it would uh, probably be detrimental to put a five speed in this thing, and it'd even make it more violent than it can be sometimes. 733, go get him. Right, thank you. Steve, a few hundreds of a second improvement in this race car, and this team could repeat as the Budweiser Challenge champion. Here is Jim Yates. His Pontiac has got quite a hill to climb because the Osmobile that he is racing against has been the class of this challenge field. Throughout the 17 events leading up to this, the finals, Warren Johnson qualified number one seven times. That, along with other high finishes, earned him a total of 2,560 points. The number eight qualifier, Jim Yates, had 1,875. He never qualified first. His highest finish the entire season was number four, but it was enough to get him into this program. Johnson in the near lane, having the lane choice. We have seen the higher qualified cars all select the same lane. Drivers ready. A great start. Almost an upset as Warren Johnson barely pulled it out at the finish line. 729 at 191 is winning time. The losing time for Jim Yates. 7-3-0. Watch this one again. Yates in this Pontiac got a very slight advantage off the starting line, and he held that all the way down the racetrack until the Oldsmobile power of Johnson came on just a few feet before the finish line. The margin of victory as they cross the magical stripe, ten thousandths of a second. Warren Johnson advanced to the final four. We'll find WJ against Bruce Allen with Johnson holding the lane choice. The other pair in the Budweiser Challenge finds Larry Morgan's Osmobile against Scott Jeffrey on Dodge. Morgan with the lane choice. Let's go to Steve and the winner. I don't care how many times you've been down the quarter of a mile. That was still one great drag race. It was, I didn't see where Jim was, but I knew he was going to give me a tough round. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it probably was real close. I have no idea. Well, you were right on the mark off the starting line. 729 to a 730. It was a close race. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> Steve, for all of his qualifying performances, Warren Johnson has never won this race. Here's the guy that knows how to win. 1989-1990, Larry Morgan took the Budweiser Challenge title. We're at Old Rich Township Raceway Park, just outside Englishtown, New Jersey, for the eighth annual running of the Budweiser Challenge. 
I'm Dave McClellan along with Steve Evans, and let me take a moment to invite you to become a member of a very special organization, the National Hot Rod Association. For just $48 a year, you get 48 issues of National Dragster, a patch, pin, rule book, and more. And if you order by calling the number on your screen right now, you'll get a free copy of Diamond B's home video, Drag Racing 91. Make that call today. The semifinal round, only four cars remain in this very elite eight-car field, leading to a $50,000 payoff to the winner. You're on board the new Dodge Daytona with Scott Jeffrey on. There in the far lane, you see Larry Morgan backing up after his burnout. Some drastic changes took place in the Dodge after the first round victory. Steve Evans stopped by the Wayne County Speed Shop pit area and asked Mike Sullivan what happened. Mike, you've had to change engines in the Dodge because you wanted to or had to. Well, we're down in performance, and we keep blowing the head gasket on one side, so we decided to put this other one in. We haven't run it all year. It's the one we used to run all the time, so we hope that it's better. We'll have to see. And you took just a moment to reweigh the car. Well, we weren't sure about the weight of the engine, so we decided we'd better go down and check it. The overall weight of the car can be no less than 2,350 pounds. If you come in under that, you are disqualified. That's why it was critical to Sullivan and crew. Jeffrey on just making it in time for this race with Morgan and his Castro Lowell's. A great start by both drivers. And just at the finish line, Larry Morgan takes the victory. Another close race here in the Budweiser Challenge. His time, 7.33 at 189 miles an hour. Jeffrey on's losing time, a 7.34. The instant replay shows us a very minimal advantage off the starting line gained by Morgan. That was four thousandths of a second. At the finish line, he was ten thousandths, a hundredth of a second quicker in elapsed time. The margin of victory, 14 thousandths of a second, and boy, that's just a few feet when they cross the stripe. Steve? Well, Scott, maybe the new engine needed a tune-up run. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was just a last-minute thrash to get up there to even make that round, so, you know, the crew did their part. You know, uh, it was a close race, so Larry come out the winner. He run quicker, so it's his day. All in all, happy with the new hot rod, though? Yeah, pretty happy. We're sorting out some gremlins right now, but, uh, you know, Eventually, we'll find them. Always do with a new car. Steve, believe me, they'll be back. You remember earlier when Steve talked about the $85,000 cost of these cars? Well, he got straightened out in a big way. That is Buddy Morrison, and Buddy very politely pointed out to me that my price of a pro-stock car, I mentioned earlier, $85,000, is way light in this day and age. And here's some reasons he showed me. The cylinder heads, well, they've always been expensive. Now it's $15,000 labor only just to port and polish them. Inside the valve cover, springs that cost $1,500 and are good for four runs. They're now using a titanium bell housing instead of steel or aluminum. It's a five-speed transmission instead of a four-speed. A $10,000 computer instead of a $1,500 computer. Titanium bits and pieces everywhere, including even the wheelie bars. You want sticker shot? Check your pro stock dealer. About a hundred and a quarter these days. And Steve, that may even be a bit light, as I've heard figures as high as $100,000 plus for a single race engine. Here's the last pair of the semifinals in the near lane. The AC Delco Osmobile of Warren Johnson. He had the lane choice. He selected it. Put Bruce Allen in the Super Shop. Lumina in the far lane. 500 cubic inch engines. Osmobile versus Chevrolet. The closest race of the day, and Bruce Allen pulls it out by one thousandth of a second. 729 at 190 miles an hour to a losing 729. This is one race that deserves a closer look. In the near lane, Warren Johnson got a 1,000th of a second advantage off the starting line. Bruce Allen had no problems on this run as he pulled up alongside, and then they marked time going down the racetrack side by side until at the finish line, Allen had a 2,000th of a second advantage performance-wise that made the margin of victory 1,000th of a second. That run gave Bruce Allen the lane choice over Larry Morgan in the finals of the Budweiser Challenge, headed to the $50,000 payoff. Steve? 
by one one thousandth of a second. It'll be Bruce Allen up against Larry Morgan. Whoa, what a drag race. That was as close a race as I can ever remember. That was an awesome race. Identical reaction times, both tremendous. Well, you told me last time that I couldn't win these races without stepping my light up, and uh, I had a little room for improvement there, didn't I? Just call me Coach. Hey, get okay, Coach. Okay. Hey, I'm at Rear Morrison, Super Shop, Chevrolet. I'm happy for him. Going to the final. Should be another great pro stock drag race. Steve, on paper, this is Bruce Allen's race to take. As the sun sets, though, remember, the track will cool down and conditions will change for the finals of the Budweiser Challenge. The moon is up over Raceway Park in English Town, New Jersey, as we have one race remaining, and it is a big one. $50,000 going to the winner of this match between Bruce Allen and Larry Morgan. The Super Shops Lumina in the near lane with the lane choice in the far lane. The car owned by Bob Panella, the Castro Oles, driven by Larry Morgan. Both of these drivers know how to win. They have taken two titles each in previous competitions. Earlier, Steve had a chance to stop by the Morgan pit area. And of course, the question always remains with a $50,000 payoff, what do you do with the money? He asked that question. Larry Morgan, wife Diane. Diane, you weren't talking about what to do with 50,000 bucks, were you? That's exactly what he wanted to know, what we were going to do with 50,000 if he won. And what did you tell him? Uh, I asked him what Mr. Pinello was going to do with 50,000. <laughs> well, he told me you get a good chunk of it. Did he? Yeah. Well, that was nice of him. That's the first I know about it, but that was nice of him. <laughs> a little redecorating? Of... That's it. Paint bills, probably. <laughs> Steve, you can bet that both camps are counting those chickens before the shell is even cracked. For the second year in a row, Bruce Allen has made it to the finals of the Budweiser Challenge. Last year, he lost it to Daryl Alderman, but this year, he comes in a substantial favorite based on the semifinal times. He had a 7.29. Morgan, the best he could muster, was a 7.33. The lane choice went to Allen. Where does he sit? In the lane nearest the camera, of course. Problem set in for Bruce Allen. Larry Morgan crosses the finish line. $50,000 richer as the celebration begins. For Morgan, his third Budweiser Challenge title. And now maybe the remodeling can start. The redecorating can begin on the Morgan household. In replay, we can watch Allen. You remember him earlier saying he rattled the tires but will pull out the victory? Well, this time he had much the same problem but was unable to recover. He had to lift. That gave Morgan the chance to pull ahead and he maintained and extended that lead all the way down to the finish line and the $50,000 pot of gold at the end of the quarter mile rainbow. Steve? We've seen you happy before, but how happy does $50,000 from Budweiser make you? I'll tell you what, I am big time happy. I, <laughs> thank, I really want to thank Budweiser. And I'll tell you, the guys I have to compete against are so bad. I, and I couldn't do this without Castro, Bob Pinella, Oldsmobile, my family, all my guys that work for me, especially my engine builder lives here. It's where he's from. And it's awful good to win. You didn't have lane choice. You were in tough, and you knew it. So you got a good hole shot. I had, I had nothing to lose. I knew I had to drive. Let's get the big check in here, huh? It's signed by the president of Budweiser, so I'm sure it's good. Steve, in the last four years, Larry Morgan has won $150,000 in Budweiser bucks. For Steve Evans, I'm Dave McClellan saying so long from English Town, New Jersey. The 1991 NHRA Budweiser Challenge has been brought to you by Valvoline. People who know, use Valvoline. Coverage of the NHRA Budweiser Challenge has been a presentation of Diamond P Sports in association with ESPN. <laughs>